we learned that it was the commission's intention to publish both that those drafts standards as well as the taxonomy link disclosures in the same set of rules at the same time. ESG has exploded into compliance and business consciousness in 2021. Join Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, on the ESG Report and learn about sustainability risks, opportunities, and issues that business leaders and compliance professionals need to know about regarding ESG. This is Tom Fox. Today I have my first cross-posting on the ESG Report. I began a special two-part series of podcasts which originally appeared on Coffee and Regs, the CSS podcast. Today we have part one of myth-busting ESG and FAQs. Speakers are Greg Huddling and Mary Cherry. Demystify the complicated world of ESG, including the latest regulatory developments, the complexity of ESG data, and what ESG means for investment managers. These cross postings are by permission of CSS, for which I thank them. I know you'll enjoy these two episodes. This is Natalie Silverman for CSS. Welcome to our next episode of Coffee and Regs. On today's episode, we're demystifying the complicated world of ESG, including the latest regulatory developments, the complexity of ESG data, and what ESG actually means for investment managers. Please welcome Regulatory Content Manager at CSS, Greg Hotelling, and our ESG specialist, Mary Cherry. Good morning, Greg and Mary, and thanks for sitting down for Coffee and Regs. Thanks, Natalie. Greg Hotelling here with CSS, and I have my colleague with me, Mary Cherry who knows, in addition to some of the areas I work in, in investment monitoring, she's helped a lot on that and on that area. She also is an expert in ESG, environmental social governance, which I'm in the process of learning a lot about as well. But I find her to be a fantastic resource on you know learning about the details and what's required, particularly in the European Union. So very happy to have her with me today. Uh, Mary, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Greg. I think that was a great introduction. But as you said, yeah, I'm part of our regulatory guidance team and and responsible for, among other things, our ESG research. So I'm looking forward to talking about all things ESG, especially within the EU. And I think today we'll make it, you know, a little bit, maybe a little bit more high level, but because I know, Mary, that you often dive into the details and you've done that on previous webinars and podcasts, et cetera. So maybe today we'll come at it a little bit more from a layperson's perspective or perhaps a compliance officer in asset management or in investment management that hasn't dove into the details or doesn't need to quite as much as someone like you, for example. And when I say that, one of the first things that comes to mind is, you know, I hear these terms ESG, environmental social governance. You know, you hear the term sustainability and you hear things like green initiatives. Is there any difference in those terms or are they just terms of art that just get confused and nobody really cares what they mean? Or do we, do we need to be aware of an actual difference in these different terms that seem to me to be thrown around rather casually? Yeah, I think that's a really good starting question. From my perspective, ESG, sustainability, green initiatives, they more or less refer to, I think, sort of the same set of driving factors, the same underlying concern about namely the planet, people and profit. So doing business in a way that, you know, exhibits concern for the long term health of the planet and for the people are impacted, but still being able to do that profitably. I think you'll hear the term sustainability and green initiatives as more general terms that might have applicability outside of the financial sector, whereas ESG is is really the term of art that refers to the integration of economic, social and governance factors in the investment process. And an alternative term for ESG is sustainable finance. So here within the EU, the European Commission and the EU regulators refer principally to sustainable finance and not really to uh, ESG. Yeah, I think that's good and that clears that up. I think one more thing to mention in this context, since we're looking at this kind of from a high level to give some more background, ESG as a term of art also incorporates voluntary standards and frameworks that were long in play before the regulators caught up and started to introduce regulation in this area. So 
It also would make you think about things such as the Global Reporting Initiative, GRE, the Principles for Responsible Investment, and other types of voluntary initiatives. So ESG and sustainable finance, basically, that's the world of finance that would be particularly relevant for asset managers. But when we talk about, and I see terms used such as sustainability in general or green initiatives, that could really apply to society you know, in general. So that's, that's good to know. That does help me parse it out a little bit. Speaking of sustainable finance and that applicability to the investment world, what would you say is particularly relevant for asset managers with regard to these topics? So for a long time, as I just mentioned, ESG was really characterized by voluntary initiatives within the finance sector. So the GRI or SASB, the uh, Sustainability Accounting Board standards more known in, in the U.S., even standards like the TCFD, which is the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures, or the very well known Sustainable Development Goals developed by the UN. So for a long time, ESG, even for asset managers, referred to these voluntary initiatives. But I think the last couple of years have shown that the voluntary ESG initiatives are starting to be, I won't say exactly displaced, but they are being overshadowed at the moment by the regulation that's taking place and developing in this space. So I think now for asset managers, for the compliance officers listening, ESG will be most relevant in, in terms of the regulations that are coming or that already exist. So within the EU, which is the most developed region in this regard, we have the EU's Action Plan on Sustainable Finance, which created a, a raft of legislative initiatives on ESG, including the much discussed and highly relevant Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation, the EU taxonomy. There are changes being discussed for the non-financial reporting directive under the corporate sustainability reporting directive that will be upcoming. There are ESG changes to the financial sector regulation within the EU, such as MIFID II, AIFMD usage directive, the insurance and distribution directive, so in that regard, our regulation is, is really uh, come to the forefront and it's really where the action is in the ESG space. Yeah, that is definitely an earful of regulatory <laughs> implications and regulatory terminology and various regimes coming out of the EU for sure. You know, we could probably talk about it. I'm sure you could talk about it for a very long time, but just to maybe boil it down a little bit, I was thinking about how this applies right now to asset managers. And for example, one question might be, what would somebody sitting in a compliance office of an investment manager now look to as a future date to be aware of? So if they were thinking, okay, what do I next need to look out for, for ESG concerns if I'm at an investment manager? And it could be with regard to any one of those regulations. They might not even be aware of all the terminology that you just described, such as the CSRD, Corporate Sustainability, I think it was the Reporting Directive, Corporate mm -hmm. Sustainability Reporting Directive, and how that might amend the non-financial directive that you talked about. And then you also separately mentioned the SFDR and the taxonomy regulation. But for somebody who's maybe at a high level that deals with regulations globally, and they have to focus perhaps maybe a small part of their day on ESG matters, they might not know exactly which one of those is going to be important to them in the next month or the next six months. What would you say to that person? What should they look out for? Is there a key date or is there a key regulation that will matter more in the near-term future? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think to focus the mind is going to be about the SFDR, the Sustainable Finance okay. Disclosure Regulation. So, so I would say two dates are important. One already occurred in the past, and that was the, the initial implementation on March 10th of the SFDR within Europe and applies to EU asset managers. And what's interesting to mention in that regard is that the SFDR as a initial text applies um, so there's some basic, you know, European legislative procedure here. The SFDR applies on its face without further action by individual EU member states on its own terms as of March 10th of this year. And that meant that asset managers within the EU needed to do a, a couple of things. First, classify their financial products under the articles of the SFDR mm -hmm. and begin the process of amending and what we saw mostly were tweaking their product documentation 
to disclose this, this product classification. The SFDR went into effect, however, before the detailed technical standards were available to the market and before those have come into effect. Because of you know, global events of the last year and a half, the European Union's timing regarding those regulatory technical standards, which we call the Level 2 RTS, that timing was thrown off and delayed and the market needed to comply with the SFDR at a high level principles base on March 10th without having the benefit of those detailed standards. So the next date that I think firms should be paying attention to is indeed the detailed regulatory technical standards that should be coming, I would say, really any day now. So in a sense, the European bodies are still overdue. This summer, we heard that the effective date of that level two technical standard would come in July of next year, July 1st, 2022 which is a six-month delay to what we expected on January 1st, 2022. So not to get too much into the details, I think what listeners should be looking out for is the final version of those technical standards. That's what we're first looking for. And then those will be published. And I really think any, when I say any day now, I think it could be in the next couple of weeks, but it could also be in the next couple of months. But we already know from the regulatory authorities in the EU that the effective date will not be before July 1st of next year. And the finalization of those standards that you mentioned, are those the standards under the SFDR that were published originally in draft form in a final report in February? I did see something like that in February. It was a draft. It was a final report from the European supervisor advisory authorities, so ESMA, EOPA, and the European Banking Authority. Mm-hmm. If you happen to know offhand, is that is that the one that will be finalized perhaps in, in a matter of weeks or months? Is that the one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, so that's what I'm referring okay. to, but it will include more than what the final report that was published in February referred to. So yeah, so it, it, it can easily get very complicated, but in short, high level terms, we are looking for the final version of those rules that you've just referred to that were published in draft form in February. At the same time, we'll be looking for additional rules in the same set of documents, rules regarding the disclosures that link to the EU taxonomy. So the product Uh, level disclosures that link to the EU taxonomy. So that's what we learned this summer from when the delay was announced to the level two technical standards. We learned that it was the commission's intention to publish both that those drafts standards as well as the taxonomy link disclosures in the same set of rules at the same time. So that's what we'll be looking for. I'll add one more note. If listeners would like to see a draft of those taxonomy linked disclosures, there is a very draft form. We haven't seen even a final version yet from the European authorities, but there is a draft form that was the subject of a consultation in March. So listeners can look to that as well. Thanks, Mary and Greg, for the insight into how you like your regs in the morning. For CSS, this is Natalie Silverman.